Hey guys, DMS here. Today I have for you the Cindy Peacock. Let's check it out. Patreon helps make videos like this possible, but it can also help you. Patreon gives you access to my Telegram chat, where you can ask me questions or just come hang out while supporting the channel and the community. You can find out more at the link in the video description. Oh man, here we go again. Okay, let's start off with build. This headphone costs over a thousand dollars. So you would think building comfort have to be pretty fantastic, right? Well, in some areas the build is pretty good. In some areas it's not. All around the leather is very soft. The leather feels nice. And I definitely have to give them compliments where it's due on picking decent feeling leather. Unfortunately, the rest of the build doesn't really hold up as well. The headband is not bad. There are some areas that I could see as major failure points, and it is nice it does have a decent range of motion, though the cups actually can't tow out enough at the top, and if you want this to fit most normal human heads, you actually have to bend. And that is correct, I did say bend the headband to make it fit. Otherwise, you will end up with pressure only on your temples and a broken seal at the bottom, resulting in no base. It's a fairly common problem. I spoke to four other reviewers who also all had the same problem with their headphones and had to bend it to get any sort of a seal. The wood the cups are made out of is basically the same cheap compressed wood that you can get in the $80 to $150 headphones that Sivga slash Cindy makes and puts on Amazon. Nothing special there. The looks might fool you, but if you've held any decent headphone in the four to $500 price range, this will feel very cheap in the hand. The cable on the other hand is nice. It is a braided cable with the same connectors uh, that you'll find on DCA headphones. I believe this is called Hyros. Comes 4.4 millimeter by default, but with adapters to both 6.3 millimeter and 4 pin XLR. So this is a balanced headphone right out of the box, which is nice. And I suppose with that said, we should probably talk about the sound. Now this is a planar magnetic open back headphone. I'm surprised that it's open back because when you put it on, uh, it's pretty isolating compared to most other open backs. Not quite as isolating as a closed back, but you can tell there is a lot of damping happening here in the headphone. Well, I'm not sure what the point of that damping was because the tuning is just insane. So on objective side, we'll do objective and then we'll do subjective because I have some subjective opinions about this as well and want to talk about technicalities like soundstage detail and so on. But first, I want to go on and knock out frequency response for this. And it's worth noting that I do listen to all these headphones write my opinions down, basically get my whole script ready to go before I measure a headphone. So the main idea there being that measurements will not influence my opinion of the headphone, and that I've solidified that beforehand. That said, these at a first glance don't look terrible on measurements. It looks like, oh, well, that's a pretty linear line. That's pretty flat. This is a raw measurement though. So that green line, you'll see that it elevates in the treble region. That is how the human ear naturally elevates. So in that region, the human ear will naturally elevate all those frequencies. And so we should see the frequency of the headphone basically elevate with it. Uh, anything under that means that treble is going to be darker. And what we get in these is a 10 decibel almost uh, decrease in treble throughout a lot of the ear gain region. So the part of the ear that normally would pick up a lot of these treble frequencies has a very, very massive scoop out of it. The result of this and the result of the headphone not being able to generate a good seal most of the time, not having good bass extension, is that we get an experience that is almost exclusively mid-range and nothing else. And the mid-range itself not being particularly neutral, having an elevation at one kilohertz or around 900 hertz, it's very shouty, but it is shouty while also being very dull. Now, I don't want every headphone to sound flat. I don't want every headphone to measure flat, but things like this just reflect laziness when it's this bad. There are headphones that I have heard that have had scoops in the ear gain region where it works. This is not one of them. So let's move over. Let's talk about more of the subjective sides of this headphone uh, and my takes on detail, soundstage, and so on. I was speaking to Andrew at Resolve Reviews about this and giving him my take on it. The specific terminology I used when describing it to him was wet slugs being banged against a tin drum. And I really can't think of a better way to describe this headphone than that. It lacks any of the clarity or detail or smoothness of a planar magnetic headphone. It actually lacks 
most of the detail that you would find in a cheap dynamic headphone. I would like for you to try this headphone. Okay. She's using the Topping D30 Pro and Topping A30 Pro down here. No, vocals do not sound good. The normal headphones that you use are $200. What do you think these sound like price-wise? <laughs> what do they sound like? Yeah. Price-wise, I, oh, not good. Like, put a, put a dollar amount on it if your normal ones are $200. Maybe like, like 80 to 100. Are they being sold for like thousands of dollars? <laughs> because that's so sad if they are. No, no, I mean, if you like listening to your music like behind that wall, then sure, but like, yeah, that was, that was pretty much my whole review. I said these were the worst headphones that I've ever reviewed. <laughs> no, 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 no. They can't be the worst. Worse than those, like, plastic, square, like, weird Japanese ones. But you know what? Okay. Yeah, you know, you're right. You're right. Those are bad. The those Take are the T. Worst. She's right. The Take T H2 Plus is the worst headphone I've ever reviewed. This is the second worst headphone that I've ever reviewed. So you heard the Peacock, we talked about it. Well, okay, so they sent it to me, they asked me if I wanted to check it out and I said, oh yeah, definitely, it's something around, you know, that like kilobuck range, kilobuck plus range, you know, uh, at Planar. And it, I, 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 I always knew about the IVA, right? And the IVA was like really well received. And so I thought, okay, this is like gonna be an evolution of that or like an upgrade to that. Big IVA. Yeah, that's what's kind of hoping for. Um, and uh, when they sent it over, I of course I listened to it and I thought, like I actually had a real hard time getting the seal to be correct on my head, or at least I thought I was having a hard time because I got like no bass response whatsoever. And I was like, what is going on? And I, so I measured it on the rig and found, sure enough, the bass was rolling off like crazy. And so what I had to do was I had to like I had to basically artificially enhance the clamp on the rig like way more than what a normal human head would be to get it to have the kind of bass extension that you know I actually want and I realized what was happening was just for whatever reason I don't know if it's like just my head or if this is like a normal thing with other people in that headphone but uh, it would always incur an air gap, like every single time. Yeah, I literally just filmed the video on it and I was talking about how I had to bend the headband in to stop it from having an air gap and even then I barely got a base yeah. seal. Sound wise, where would you put the price of that? Cause she said like 80 bucks. I'd probably go a little bit higher because I think that there is still the planar like separation advantage, like the instrument separation is there still with the, because you know, planars are great at that. Um, so I would probably place it at around a, uh, like under under the six XX for sure, you know. Um, yeah. Somewhere maybe let's let's say 150 bucks, something like that. Def so not not quite. It's MSRP. Not not quite. No, I think uh, so. It's one of those where you wait for a deep sale. <laughs> I can't believe I'm actually saying it, but this is worse than the GL2000. It's worse than the Phoenix. It's worse than the Bowers and Wilkins P9. This is, and I say this in the most depressing way imaginable, quite possibly one of the worst headphones I have ever reviewed pretty much throughout the entirety of my YouTube career. And it costs this much. It reminds me nothing of any planar that I have ever heard. I can't think of any planar, even the cheapest, worst planars that sound anything like this. Nothing about this, I think, to the human ear can be remotely enjoyable. I just don't understand it. I don't know if it's just a quick cash grab. I don't know if people are just gonna see it and think it looks nice and be like, yeah, I'll buy that. That looks like an expensive headphone. But honestly, it's just an insult. It's an insult to everyone who is into audio. It's an insult to everybody who loves music. Damn, guys, I really don't know how you messed this one up this bad. Someone is gonna comment on this video and be like, I have these and they're perfect, they're amazing, they're the spitting image of God in a headphone. Uh, awesome. Great, cool. I'm glad you enjoy them. Don't ever listen to an LCD because that will absolutely melt your brain. The worst thing that Odyssey ever made is tenfold better than this. And I think that would be putting it very, very mildly. If you want any resemblance of treble detail, you're gonna have to put on a hazmat suit and dig deep in the mud to find it because it's just not here. It's all been scooped out. It's down in the trenches. It's down in the valley of goo. Vocals take what I would normally describe as hollow and turn it into the deepest cave imaginable. It's like, um, you know what, here, this is perfect. If you want to have a sound demo, 
of what these sound like, just go to a cheap set of computer speakers. Turn them on right in front of you, position them pretty well, then take your ears and do this. Cup over everything. Hey, you, you know what? Actually, right now, talking like this, this is a lot what vocals sound like through that headphone. It's just this weird mid-range resonance and nothing else and every other frequency is cut out. And I can hear my own head voice more than I can hear my actual voice in the room. This is what they must have been hearing when they tried to tune that headphone. This is assuming they even tried to tune it, which I'm not really sure. I'm rambling. I could ramble about this for a really long time. Conclusion, should you buy the Peacock? If you're still asking yourself at this point... Are you good? Are you, are you okay? Don't buy this headphone. Don't buy this headphone. That's it. That's the video. If you liked it, like down below. Comment letting me know... Why? If you want to get active in the community, you can at forum.hifiguides.com. And as always, don't forget to stick around and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Until the next one, guys. Peace.